I got a little time in the shop today, so I think I'm going to use it wisely and put an upgrade on my workbench. Now, this is an armor tool bench. I've been using it for years. It's sturdy. It's mobile. It has an adjustable height, so I use it as an outfeed table for my table saw, and I use it on just about every single build. But the one thing it doesn't have is a vise for the side of the bench, and that'd be something I like to have so that I can clamp boards off the end of the bench, both vertically and horizontally. I think that if I use and incorporate some sliding dovetails with these dovetail clamps and some scrap wood I have laying around the shop, I can pretty much do this for free. So let's get started. Over at the table saw, I cut a piece of one inch thick ash to five inches wide for the face of the vise. This ash wood was left over from a recent build and this or any hardwood should work great for the vise face. I took the piece over to the miter saw and cut it to 18 inches long as this vise will be mostly used for smaller projects. Feel free to adjust this link to whatever works for you and your workbench. Back at the table saw, I lowered my blade to just under the recommended height for the dovetail grooves. This will make the dovetail cuts cleaner and will reduce the wear and tear on my dovetail bit. I went with two equally spaced horizontal cuts and three equally spaced vertical cuts. Notice while setting up for the vertical cuts, I used a piece of scrap wood as a spacer between the board and the fence that I removed before cutting. This method helps reduce the chance of a kickback while making this cut. Over at the router table, I set up my micro jig dovetail bit and began to make the dovetail cuts using the relief cuts as a guide. This little gauge that I'm using comes from micro jig and shows you the exact depth that you need for the sliding dovetails. Now don't worry, if you don't have a router table, you can use your router and a straight edge to make these cuts. Next, I needed to cut a cleat to attach to the bottom of my workbench to increase the width and give me something extra to screw the face of the vise to. I cut a piece of two inch thick ash roughly to the same length as the vise face and about three inches wide. I pre-drilled the holes in the cleat and then attached it to the bottom of my workbench using three inch screws. Next, I used this awesome little countersink bit to pre-drill the holes for the screws in the vise face and then secured it to the bench and cleat. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link to the countersink bit as well as all the other tools and clamps and micro jig stuff that I use in this video. Anytime you use those links, it supports the channel and we appreciate it. The cleat added the extra thickness that I needed for the second set of screws, which gave this vise some extra strength and stability. I used a round over bit in my trim router to round over all the outside edges and a sanding sponge to hit all the inside edges to make sure everything was nice and clean.
With that, the vise was ready to be used, and as you can see, the micro jig clamps slide freely through all the slots. This vise was exactly what I was wanting and needing and only took about 45 minutes or so to build. So it's going to be extremely handy in my shop. All right, with that, this project is completed. It was easy to do. It only took me about 45 minutes and it incorporated these micro jig clamps that I already had. I use them on my table saw sled. I use them on my drill press table. Speaking of the drill press table, I'll put that video right there. Check that out. It's an awesome, awesome drill press table. I use it all the time. And this is gonna be extremely handy for me as well. So thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.